welcome biology to so this session where we're going to be taking a look at 5.1.1 communication homeostasis specification point a and b and in this we're going to be looking at why do we need to respond to our environments and also what is cell signaling so the first thing that we need to look at here is why do we need to respond to our environment so plants and animals will respond differently to their environment Plants need to avoid herbivory. They need to grow towards sunlight and water and also towards gravity in the roots. Now, there's different words to use to describe this and it's normally using the word tropism. So, thigmotropism. Thigmo means touch. So, thigmotropism is response to touch. So, positive thigmotropism is moving towards touch. Negative thigmotropism is moving away from touch. Sunlight, that is phototropism. So moving towards light would be positive phototropism. So I have seen these terms in the exams before that you need to be familiar with. Animals, these need to move to catch up their prey or avoid predation. But both plants and animals need to respond to abiotic and biotic factors in their environment. Abiotic is a non-living factor such as temperature and biotic factors are living factors such as uh, competition for food. The main reason why we need to do this and respond to our environment is because of enzyme activity. We need to make sure that our internal environment has that optimum temperature for enzyme activity, especially those that are involved with metabolic reactions. And this is always on the exam, this thing about metabolic reactions, where it involves aerobic respiration to produce ATP, which is needed for things like muscle contraction and active transport. Now, here are some other examples of different types of internal and external environments that need to be regulated. We're going to look a little bit more at the internal environment ones when we get onto homeostasis in the next video. Um, but for now, we need to look at how we detect and also respond to stimuli. Now, the main way in which we detect something going on within our body is through neurons detecting um, through the receptors there that there's some change within some kind of a stimulus, for example, light or pressure. Now here we've got pressure, it's to do with kinetic energy being transformed into chemical energy in the neuron. Now that is also known as a transducer, so the receptors here are known as a transducer because it's changing one form of energy into another. It's turning the kinetic energy of the pin into the chemical energy inside the neuron. Now you should know this basic reflex arc from GCSE, where I've got my receptors being attached to my sensory neuron, the sensory neuron feeds into the central nervous system where I find my relay neurons. My relay neurons are attached to my motor neurons. And my motor neurons are attached to a muscle or a gland, which is also known as an effector. So that muscle or gland will then trigger a response. Now, if it's a gland, that gland may produce a hormone. Now, hormones can impact upon cells in two different ways because there are two types of hormone. If the hormone is a lipid-based hormone, it means that it can diffuse straight through the phospholipid bile because it's lipid soluble. So as you can see here in this particular picture, it's diffused straight through the phospholipid bilayer and it can impact straight upon the DNA to trigger some kind of response within that cell. So that might be to stop producing a protein or to start producing a particular protein in response to what that hormone is asking. The other type of hormone is a peptide hormone and a peptide or protein based hormone cannot diffuse straight through the fossil bilayer. It's too large to diffuse through the fossil bilayer. So what these hormones do is they use something called a first messenger and second messenger response, whereby here my first messenger, which is also known as my hormone, for example, adrenaline, will bind to a receptor because they are complementary and specific in shape. Once my hormone has bound to my receptor, it will then activate the enzyme adenyl cyclase. So all this on the left hand side here is taken directly from the MAR scheme. Adenyl cyclase will then activate the second messenger, which is cyclic AMP. So it goes from an inactive to an active cyclic AMP. So this is my second messenger here, my cyclic AMP. Now my cyclic AMP or CAMP will then trigger a response inside that cell. And depending upon what cell it is will depend upon what that response may be. So, for example, a pancreatic cell will respond differently to a liver cell. Now, um, these kind of responses are cell signaling. A cell signaling is communication between cells. It could be cell recognition or identification. Cells working together to trigger response. That is the definition of cell signaling. And you need to be aware of that. So there we are, we've covered spec point A and B. Good luck with your exams, guys. Remember to use good scientific terminology and not the words it, they, amount or size.